Hi! So if you love dolls as much as I do, you probably know that the greatest movie of all time is in movie theaters right now. And in order to celebrate the Barbie movie, I just knew I had to make a Barbie doll. In fashion, as with my Monster High redesigns, I want to redesign a Barbie and make her as a BJD. But that's not all. Because I wanted to try this for a long time and I am an absolute mad woman, I'll be going to make a Barbie BJD in life size. <laughs> to do that, I will be scaling up my Nova BJD to 400% and slap on a custom Barbie face made by Blue Pixie. The scaling will make the doll approximately 5 foot 3. To start this absolute bonkers project, I however need to figure out a way how to even print her. For various reasons though, resin printing was not an option for this project. First of all, she would need way too much resin. And in case you don't know, resin is expensive AF. I make bad financial decisions. Second of all, even my biggest printer would be way too small in order to print these gigantic body pieces. And last but not least, resin is heavy. So if I would have made the doll in resin, it would have just been an unmovable Ice Age boulder. <laughs> Luckily, my friend Frosty Insanity, who happens to be a professional cosplayer, was down to print the doll for me in filament. So I sent him the files and he hopped on to printing. And guess what came in the mail today? Oh god! Oh. Ugh, big package. That's what she said. <laughs> okay, let's open this bad boy up. Oh my god, what was I thinking? <laughs> okay, so now that the doll is unboxed, we need to sand, like, a lot. <laughs> So let's do that for probably the next couple of days. Uh. So we've been sending for a couple hours now, but it is taking forever. Ah! The doll parts were already relatively smooth because Frosty did prime them, but in order to get rid of all the bumps and scratches, I want to sand them a little more. I also added another layer of primer to them so that all the doll pieces would have an even base color. Luckily, my assistant Leon was so nice to help me with those huge pieces. Isn't sanding fun? <laughs> so much fun. <laughs> Best thing ever. Alright, so I primed all the doll pieces now. And before I'm actually going to spray paint them with skin tone, I'm gonna make already some patterns for the clothes later. So we won't actually accidentally scratch off the skin tone or anything like that. After successfully making patterns with duct tape, I decided to show you all the primed doll parts, ready to be painted with skin tone. I'm happy how smooth they turned out. Painting them now will not be easy, but I'm hyped. <laughs> so I painted one piece already in skin tone and it looks really cool so far, so let's do that to all the other pieces. After hours of spray painting, I eventually was able to paint all the doll parts and now have to glue in big magnets. So the magnets are a bit small here in the hands, but that's fine. They are very strong, so it, it should work. I first use super glue to glue them in place and then fill up the gaps with UV resin so that the magnets will definitely stay in place forever. I just need to cure them now. The moment of truth. <laughs> And then I have to do the same to the ankles and feet and the faceplate and hat back. 
For assembling the doll I actually built a temporary extra table because I needed the surface to be a bit lower than my work table. All the doll parts look so good but oh my god they're so big. I hope I can get her strong. That part was actually the one I dreaded the most because that could make the whole project fail, right? <laughs> so in order to string this I bought this super thick elastic and I hope this is going to work. Ah. <laughs> the upper torso was so big that I could just thread the elastic through with my hands, which was actually a little easier than on smaller dolls. Then I used some long folded aluminum wires to thread the arm pieces onto the elastic simultaneously. Until this part it was easy, but to thread in the wrist joints I needed help from my dad because of the sheer tension of the elastic. Okay, so these are not pretty, but they don't have to be. <laughs> With these beautiful handmade S hooks, we could hook in the wrist joints on both left and right arm. And stringing the arms did actually work! Yay! Okay, arms are strung. Let's string the rest. <laughs> ah! Um, where's my rubber? Okay, so for the body of the doll, I'm gonna take an elastic with the length of one Lisa. <laughs> With the elastic looped, I started stringing the rest of the body, starting with the head back, then going through the upper and middle torso, and then splitting it in the lower torso so that each loop goes through one leg hole. Now I can start stringing the legs, starting with the hip joints, then threading on upper thighs, knees, and lower legs. Then I needed my dad's help again to put its sticks onto the ends of the legs before threading on the ankle joints, just like we did with the wrist joints. Now I simply have to put on the hands and feet and in the very end attach the faceplate. And I can't believe this actually worked! Oh my god, she stands! Of course because of the high heel feet she needs a stand, but I'm so incredibly happy this worked out. By the way, she weighs around 15 pounds, so she is heavy but not too heavy to move around. But she's truly tall. So just to show you how big she is. Even taller with the shoes on later. Ah! <laughs> Let's make her eyes next. I scaled up Nova's regular eye size to 56 millimeters and printed them. These are some gigantic eyes. <laughs> Let's scrape them off and give you some ASMR crunch. After washing them in alcohol, I throw them into my curing station and microwave them until they're cured. After about two minutes, I take them out of the curing station and we can now get on to painting them. Barbie has beautiful blue eyes, so I decided to mix a pretty sky blue and paint the iris with it. When they were both painted and dry, I took the rhinestones that I painted with black acrylic paint and attach them with a dot of superglue to the middle of the iris. Afterwards, I take some UV resin and apply a thin layer to the eye and spread it until the edge of the iris with a toothpick. To give the eyes a little pizzazz, I decided to sprinkle blue glitter onto the uncured resin. Now they look nice and sprackly and are ready to be cured under my UV lamp that totally didn't break recently, so I had to duct tape it. <laughs> After about a minute they were cured and now I can add more resin, spread it again with a toothpick and then add some eye shines with little sequins and an iridescent rhinestone. It looks so neat after curing, so I decided to dome the eyes with a final layer of resin. I didn't want to overdo it with the eye inlays and sparkles because it can easily look too busy and I think they look really pretty like this. With the eyes made, how about we paint her face next? Her face plate is so big, I could barely fit it in frame on my cam and tripod. See my hand compared to her face? For applying her blushing, I actually used a real makeup brush because all the other brushes I had were way too small. Also, even though I sprayed her face with MSC, it took some time to build up the blushing. I eventually managed to give her face a nice pink blushing shading though and decided to first outline her lips. I will give her some pink lipstick later, so I just needed to draw the initial lip shape with a pencil instead of just adding blush to the lips. When I was satisfied, I take a dark grey pencil and now sketch out her eyeliner shape. I'm not going to do anything crazy, just a sweet winged eyeliner that fits Barbie's look. Unfortunately, my SD card was full, so I have no footage of sketching the pink liner, but at least I can show you how I shaded her eyebrows. With a in combination of light brown pastel chalk dust, I apply the brow shape with a small brush and try to give them a soft look. With a bigger brush I can blend the shades in a little easier and continue that until I am satisfied. And now I can finally fill in the pink lip color. My pink Posca marker has the perfect shade for it, so I use that to fill the lips in and use a small brush to spread the ink and along the edges of the lips for a clean outline. 
I then also use a brush to apply the Posca ink to the pink eyeliner lines so that the lines end up nice and crisp. It was so weird to work on such a big surface this time. After all the pink lines were painted, I then take some black acrylic paint and fill in the eyeliner. It was not as hard as I feared it was to paint even lines. I guess practicing on small scale doll heads already paid off. <laughs> I also decided to add a little pink snaky eyeliner around the black wing because I thought it looked pretty cool. And then just fill in the black around it. Now we can finally draw her lower lashes. I was scared that the lash painting process would lash out on me because of the size differences, but I think I made it work and actually had a lot of fun painting them. I just took my time and painted them with dark brown gouache paint. Afterwards, I then apply some dark brown and black pastel chalk dust to blend the lash line in. This always gives the face a much more complete look. Before sealing her off one final time, I of course have to add pearly sparkly shimmers to the face. It makes the whole look even prettier and I love this iridescent light glitter. See how it sparkles? Ah! For the finishing touches, I add some Liquitex high gloss varnish to her lips. I would imagine Barbie definitely wears a glossy lip. And I just love the way glossy lips reflect the light. I also glossed her lash line. Um, I just forgot to film, I'm sorry. <laughs> After the glazing process, I also decided to add some more sparkles by gluing some rhinestones to the eyeliner lines. It's just a little eye catcher, but so pretty, I think. For our lashes, I actually will stack two super long lashes together that my friend Kami was so kind to send me, because her eyes are so big. With the lashes done, I apply some PVA glue to the upper lash line and then carefully glue the lashes in place and let that whole thing dry for a couple hours. Afterwards, it looked like this and the face looks so cute already. Here are also the finished eyes, so how about we put them into the doll face with some editing magic? Okay, wow, this just screams Barbie to me, don't you think? Look how cute her face is, I love it so much. But what am I gonna make for her outfit and hair? Hmm, let me show you. In the Barbie movie, we have the perfect day Barbie, and I was thinking, wouldn't it be cool if I would make a perfect night Barbie? So I came up with this outfit design. My perfect night Barbie will get a bra and panty combo made from baby pink velvet and plush and topped with a chain belt. On top, she will wear a bolero jacket made from translucent, iridescent, shiny organza with a fitting skirt combo. I also make her a choker, a brooch, and some fitting accessories. To top the outfit, she will wear glittery fishnet tights and pink high heels. For her hair, she will get a wig with two super long pigtails in, of course, platinum blonde. She's ready to rave, she's ready to go to the club, and she's ready to slay. But first, of course, uh, we need to make that outfit, so let's get going. <laughs> But in order to make the outfit, we have to actually get some fabrics. So I thought I will take you guys along with me this time. Okay, change of scenery. <laughs> we are in Berlin right now because we have to get some fabrics for the Barbie doll and I decided I don't want to order them online. Uh, and this time go to a big fabric store. So yeah. Let's do that. Oh, the wind is crazy. <laughs> if this doesn't scream Barbie, I don't know what does. <laughs> So we got everything, almost everything that I needed. Uh, the rest I will just have to order online, I guess. But yeah, now we can go home and look at all the stuff I got. Yay. Okay, so it's the next day after our shopping spree in Berlin and I got so many nice fabrics. I guess I'm just setting up the cam and show you what I got. <laughs> I got this beautiful shiny iridescent organza, some light pink velvet, this metallic shimmery pink jersey, some pink satin fabric and this tool with tiny hearts on it. I also found some studs in my stash that might fit, got these golden rings and these golden chains. And finally, I also got some golden snap buckles. I'm so happy with all the fabrics I got. The workers in the fabric store already were like, this looks like Barbie, <laughs> if they only knew. <laughs> I don't know if I'll end up using all of the materials, but better have more than you need than not enough, right?
So for the week starting, my friend Kami Zero, who happens to be a professional hair and makeup artist, offered to make the wig for my human-sized Barbie doll. Hi guys, it's me. I'm Kami Zero. I'm a doll collector myself, and today I'm here to give this old Barbie a makeover. So let's give her a wig, shall we? And guess what just came in the mail? What you got there? A knife! <laughs> He says, have fun with the wig and that he's looking forward to the video. <laughs> oh, I see it. I see it. Ah, whoa. This is nuts. Look at this. Oh my God. <laughs> Let me put this onto the mannequin. It's giving Sailor Moon and I freaking love it. Look how long these pigtails are. Ah, <laughs> this is fantastic. Ooh, now just some accessories. I'm gonna say yeah. <laughs> Just found that on the bottom of the package there was also this soap bubble unicorn. Oh, oh my god, that is the cutest thing ever, I can't. <laughs> For the wig accessories, I pre-made some stuff. First, I put this scrunchie around the pigtail with some Velcro. Then, I take this glittery pink ribbon and put it around the pigtail with a Velcro too. I then take a ribbon from the same material and glue it onto the pink hair tie with some hot glue. And then I take a white Barbie bee and also put it on top of the ribbon. I now have to decorate the other side too, so let's make a transition here. And boom! Yay! I was vibing so much that I had to do the jazz hands. <laughs> I think the wig turned out absolutely incredible and I cannot wait to see how she will look on the doll in the end together with everything else. But for that you will need to wait until the reveal of the doll. <laughs> I'm gonna start the outfit by making her panties. I simply traced the pattern pieces onto the backside of the baby pink velvet with some erasable pen and cut them out with seam allowances. The panty has two back pieces and a front piece and I will first need to sew together the back seam of the panty a little bit, leaving enough room for it to be able to be put on the doll later. Afterwards, I can slap on the front pieces along the side seams and join them together on both sides finished sides in. Here you can see I already closed the crotch seam and pinned an elastic around the leg hole and need to do the same thing now on the other leg hole as well. I marked some spots on the elastic so I pin it evenly because it's about 10% shorter than the leg hole length. And then I sew it on with a zigzag stitch while pulling the elastic straight to match the length of the leg hole. Okay, and now since this is sewn, I need to now fold this towards the inside and sew it again with a zigzag like I did on this side. I'm sewing these parts with a zigzag so the leg holds will stay elastic but also will lay tight on the doll later and won't dangle around <laughs> loosely. Since the panties have a closure, I sewed the top part with a regular stitch and will now add glamour to them by attaching this pink fluff fabric trim that I got in Tokyo. To glue it, I'm using my contact adhesive for a strong bond. Isn't Kraftkleber just like the secret agent bond? <laughs> And with the fluff glued and the closure added, the panties are done. To show you just how big they are, here's me presenting them. They turned out so nice. Okay, let's make Barbie's bra next. To sew her bra cups, I pinned the two cup pieces together and sew the curved line finished sides in. After sewing it looks like this and I will now use my serger machine to clean up all the edges of the fabric. I still have this machine since I studied fashion design and it's a great professional way to make your fabric edges look good. For door clothes I don't like to use them that much though on smaller scales. With the cup cleaned up I can then fold around the upper seam allowances and hem them in place. I also cleaned up the chest band of the bra with my serger machine and already hemmed the lower seam allowance. I then take the cups and pin them to the curved seams good sides in and sew them. Afterwards it really starts to look like a bra and I now just need to hem the remaining seams on the upper part of the chest band. To attach her bra straps I made these little fabric loops and will attach these carabiner rings to them so I can hook on the straps easy later on. I pin them in place on top of the glar cup and on the back side of the bra. Okay, and now I just have to sew this. For straps I'm going to use these big chains I got and now just have to hook them onto the big ring. And to make the bra fit the panty I'm also gonna hem them with the plush fabric. I will attach it around the cups first and then also on the bottom of the chest band. I also made her a brooch from foam. I will show you later how I made it because I made more foam elements for her. So now I just hot glue a little pin to the backside of it. This way the brooch is detachable and you could even wear it yourself. I love dolls that have accessories that you could wear as a human as well. <laughs> ah! 
With the closure and the brooch added, the bra is done and I'm living for it. It's so cute and I wish it would fit me, but Barbie's doll proportions are sadly very unrealistic even though she is human sized. <laughs> Let's make her jacket next. Okay, so I can't even sew this fabric with my overlock machine, so I actually have to glue around all the edges so that they don't fray, because this fabric frays like crazy. So I'm doing that right now. It takes forever. Probably will take longer than sewing the whole jacket in the end. <laughs> Yeah, my serger did not like this fabric, so I glue sealed all the edges. It took forever, but it worked extremely well. And when it was dry, I could already fold around the bottom seam allowances of the sleeve and hem them in place. Afterwards, I then fold the side seams of the sleeves together, finished sides in and also sew them. I also pulled a gathering thread on top of the sleeves and will now gather them. It always takes a bit of time, but it looks really nice once it's done. For the bodice of the jacket, I first take the big pattern piece and will close the darts in the front finished sides in. When that was done, I can then pin the side seams of the jacket together good sides in as well and hem them. I then made a whole second jacket piece the same way and will now sew both jackets together so that the fabric lays double. Basically, I just have to sew these two jackets into each other. I left a small gap on the back open and then can flip the jackets inside out. With all the jacket pieces prepared, we then have two sleeves and the finished bodice piece. So now I can sew the sleeves into the bodice good sides in. This always takes a little while to pin and sew, but it's manageable. I then decided to also make these big ribbons from the same material as the jacket and attach them to the shoulders with a thread and needle by hand so you won't see the stitching. And with that the jacket is done and I am loving it. This fabric literally looks like some candy wrapping material and gives me such 80s Barbie vibes. Ah, obsessed. Let's make Barbie's foam accessories. Everything is set up for the accessories to be cut of foam and oh, I'm gonna cut them. It's so neat that you can cut thin 2mm EVA foam with the a laser, laser cutter. cutter. This way you can cut all the shapes so neatly. The letters look so nice even before removing the excess foam already. And here I placed them on my work table. As you can see, I already made one test letter here and will show you now how I did that. First, I take some UV resin and spread it around the edges of the foam letters with a toothpick. I cure it under my UV lamp for a minute and then spread more UV resin on top of the letter until I have an even surface. After curing it again, I can then rub on some golden chrome nail art powder to make them look like metallic letters. Awesome! Now I just need to do that to all the other letters, so how about some editing magic here? Bam! All letters have been metalized and look so good. <laughs> I'm so happy this technique works so nice. Okay, it's time to bedazzle. 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 To make the letters look even better, I decided to bedazzle them with rhinestone chains. So I apply some PVA glue to the edges of the letters and then apply the chains carefully. This took forever. So let's put a nice little montage here. Oh my god, I'm done! I'm done! Yay! <laughs> Let me show you all the letters. Okay, so I just hooked together a big chain basically for the belt and put some rings on it. And now I will just put the letters onto the rings. Unfortunately, my cam decided not to focus on the rings here, but I guess this step is very self-explanatory. With this last step, the chain belt is done and I really like how it turned out. The letters really look like they're metallic and it's gonna look so nice on the doll later on. And this belt I could also technically wear myself. Hmm. <laughs> The small Barbie letters will be for her choker, so let's make that next. I will use this metallic pink fabric for it and an EVA foam strip and now try to bond the two pieces together with spray adhesive. I had no idea just how violently that stuff sprays. <laughs> oh god. As carefully as I could, I applied it to both fabric and foam and then stick the foam piece onto the fabric. I cut off the seam allowances and then tried to fold them around the edges towards the backside as tight and neat as I could. To clean the edges, I fold them like this and snip off any excess on the corners. And with that we have a cute little choker on which I can now attach the golden letters with my trusty Uwe glue. I tried to glue them exactly in the center of the strip and as straight as possible. 
To finish off the choker, I made a little golden ring combo like this and glue it towards the center of the choker from the backside as well. Now I just slap on some self-adhesive super thin velcro to both ends of the choker and with that the choker is done and I'm so proud that the foam fabric cover combination looks this nice. This is definitely a cool technique for future projects as well. For the waistband skirt combo I made a foam fabric strip the same way as I did for the choker and will be using this golden snap buckle as a closure. I simply thread the ends through the buckle and glue them around with contact cement to make sure they never come apart again. <laughs> okay, so I already made this gigantic skirt piece thing. I couldn't really film that because it was so, so big, but it's just basically two rounded fabric strips on top of each other and gathered. And now I need to figure out a way how to attach them to the backside of this belt. And I was thinking of just ironing on some seam tape and then just gluing it on with heat, basically. Uh, okay, um, seam tape didn't work, so I'm going to use contact glue. <laughs> I wanted to avoid the sticky booger glue, but it was just the best option here, so I applied it to both belt and the top of the skirt, and then stick both pieces together. This luckily bonded immediately and should not come apart anymore. Yay! <laughs> This was actually the last step to finish the belt skirt combo and it looks so nice as well. She has a tiny waist though, so I can't wear the skirt sadly. <laughs> it's very long, I can't really get it on cap. <laughs> Let's make her shoes next. So for her shoes, Frosty actually also printed these high heels for me and I'm gonna spray paint them now. To paint them I use some Molotov spray paint in candy pink and apply it to the shoes until they're completely covered. The paint is really neat and pigmented so I only needed one layer of paint. This is how they looked when they were completely painted and now I bedazzle them with rhinestone chain. I first apply some glue to the lower brim of the shoe and then stick on the sparkly chain all the way around the brim. Looks nice! Now I just have to do the same around the heel as well and afterwards it looks like this. For a more cohesive look, I decided to glue some fluff to the toe caps as well. I think it looks super cute and fits the whole look of the doll very nicely. And for her ankles, I made these little ankle bracelets and I'm going to attach these gigantic zipper hats that I found to them with cord glue. I think such oversized accessories fit her so well, because if I would scale her up, the zippers would scale up too, right? <laughs> and here are the finished shoes and ankle bracelets. I think they look so cute and I'm stoked to see them on the finished doll later. Last but not least, let's give her a manicure, shall we? Barbie's nails are already a little longer, but I wanted them even longer, so I decided to attach these fake nails that I had laying around. I just filed them in shape and attached them with super glue. After doing that to both hands, I can then use my Posca marker and paint them all pink. Occasionally, I spread the ink with a brush on tricky spots. To speed up the process, I made a little transition here and I'm going to apply a thin layer of UV top coat to the nail. When it was nice and even, I used some pink glitter and let it rain onto the nail to make them sparkly. Afterwards, I can finally bedazzle the nails even more and completely out of focus. <laughs> I searched my whole stash for stuff that I could use and just went with the flow here. Attaching little cabochons, nail art stuff and even a small nail piercing that I made to the nails. What came in really handy was the hard 3D gel that can be used as a UV nail adhesive. Such neat stuff. I even made her another foam letter so I can implement it to the nail art. Eventually, I was done bedazzling and finished the nails. I'm so happy how they look and I wish I could wear nails like that myself, but I could not craft with them. <laughs> I also got these glitter fishnet tights from Amazon to finish off Barbie's look. And that was actually the very last bit for my Barbie. She is finally done and I cannot wait to show you. Y'all ready for my life-size Barbie redesign?
she is. <laughs> this project really feels like I conquered my magnum opus. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching the process and special thanks goes to all of my patrons. You are the very, very best. Next video will be the next Monster High redesign, so I hope you're looking forward to that. See you soon! Bye! <laughs>